Hey guys, welcome to my crib. No, just kidding. My house uh, can never be this awesome. So where are we today? Well, this is the guide to Latvia. And the last episode was, well, quite some time ago, right? So I thought you guys deserve something special. And since Midsummer is coming up, and no, not that uh, horror movie. <laughs> the summer solstice, Midsummer. The main holiday for every Latvian is coming up. We wanted to tell you uh, an, a more in-depth about this holiday, about the Latvian traditions, how we used to live before Christianity. And uh, today we uh, went to the Latvian Ethnographic Museum. Uh, a museum that is almost a hundred years old. And uh, it features a collection over 87 hectares. Can you imagine that? A territory of 87 hectares with all the historic buildings from different regions, different eras, rebuilt perfectly as they were uh, originally. And uh, I will show you around. And today I'm joined by some uh, of my colleagues that you already know. So we will walk around, show you some beautiful sights, show you the Latvian way of living and tell you about the Latvian midsummer uh, or summer solstice festivities. Let's go. So uh, today we're not in studio, obviously, but there's a lot of things that we have to be precise about because traditions, we value them. We don't want to um, make stupid mistakes. So that's why I prepared some cards with the facts, like in uh, game shows and so on. So uh, yeah, to be precise, to, to stay true to the traditions, uh, me and my colleagues will take some sneak peeks in here. Um, and the number one fact that you must know at this point, doom, uh, during the summer uh, solstice celebrations, which is the shortest night of the year, the longest day of the year so thank god it's a holiday imagine having the longest uh, office day uh, during this night we don't go to sleep you must not go to sleep whatever it costs and here's a quote from our ex-president Vaira Vita Freiberg who is the first woman president here she was very popular and she was a scholar of Latvian well she is a scholar I'm sorry of Latvian tradition and uh, even semiotics, like uh, the science of uh, signs in culture, symbols, you know. Look uh, what she has to say. The sleepless night during midsummer is not just for pure joy or because we have nothing better to do. No, no, no. It's a ritual with roots so deep that it's almost an obligation of sorts. You have to try and make an effort to sing on midsummer's night. Uh, and she also adds that uh, it's not too much to ask uh, to not sleep during this night because, well, it's the shortest night of the year. So, not sleeping. If we don't sleep, what do we do? Let me tell you and let my colleagues tell you. The main components of this holiday is bonfires, herb and flower gathering, special cheese and beer, and of course our traditional songs which contain a chant or chorus Ligo, Ligo. This chant is shared between many of our traditional songs and it allows everyone to participate even if they are hearing the song for the very first time. So, you want to make Latvian cheese? Well, good news, I have the recipe. So, for the special cheese recipe, you need two kilograms of cottage cheese, you know, like a curd. Um, around five liters of fresh fat milk. If you can't get like a uh, farmer's market's uh, unpasteurized milk, then just get uh, good quality whole milk. It has to be fat. Now you need two teaspoons of caraway seeds. Might uh, have to shop around a bit, but uh, you should be able to find it. Uh, by the way, these are not technically seeds, it's actually the fruit of the caraway plant, but uh, technicalities. Uh, also, you'll need uh, five to eight eggs, depending on the consistency you want to achieve. So, uh, what you have to do? First step is to crush the cottage cheese with the caraway seeds, everything crushed together, 
really create a fine, fine uh, mass. And then you will have to boil the milk with the cottage cheese inside and keep stirring. It's very important until the whey separates. Then you find a nice coarse cloth to use as a filter. Uh, you pour the whole thing through a damp cloth. It has to be damp and let the juices drain. Uh, you will be left with like a softer cheesy thing. Then you fold everything back into cloth. You might want to add salt at this point, but if you do, uh, the cheese will be softer. So an important step. So fold everything back into the cloth, this weird mass, uh, roll it, make it like as compact as possible and place under a heavy load to compress it. How long? 12 hours. It has to compress for 12 hours. Then you take it out and put it in very salty water for 24 more hours. And then finally let it dry. You could use uh, an oven, just don't make it hot. It has to be like mm, almost cold. Just let it dry. Voila, that's your cheese. Now you are officially ready to become a Latvian. The importance of fire is historically related to the cult of the sun and fertility. Traditionally, you would have several bonfires. Some must be placed on a pole or on a hill. So Latvians have a natural affinity when it comes to mounting S60s and LAGs. But you also need a nice fire to gather, sing and dance around. But that's not all. We also jump over the fire. Why? Well, it depends who you ask. Some will tell you it protects you from all sorts of harm. Diseases, witchcraft, even mosquitoes. It's a tradition, but also it's fun. You might have seen roven berries. Well, that tree is supposed to repel evil spirits. And if you want even more protection, you could gather thistles, nettles and other prickly plants. Our ancestors placed them near the barns. And just like that, access to witches was denied. Hogweeds, hawthorns and apple branches were also used. I haven't heard of any recent witch attacks, but you can still find rowan branches above the beds in the countryside. So guys, if you come to the museum, you have to check out the local canteen, because not only they have the best Latvian traditional dishes, they also have this very tasty uh, cannabis um, butter. It doesn't have any like funny effects to it, so don't get too excited. But uh, it's even better than you could imagine. It's really, really tasty. I actually bought uh, a jar uh, when I was last time here a month ago or so. So every breakfast, well, not every breakfast, but I, I take a piece of rye bread, uh, add the butter and bone up with it. When it comes to decorating the place, once again, we turn to plants. You will see birch saplings in every corner, sometimes in a container of water to keep it fresh. Now, every Latvian is supposed to know this. You have to treat the forest with respect. In state forests, everyone can harvest up to five birch saplings. But there are some rules. You can't cut baby birches. You can't take down trees over three meters. Don't damage the trunk and the top of the trees. Common sense, right? If we turn to traditional tales, we can actually find some descriptions of the mythical fern flower. It has been described as tiny, red, light, yellow, shining, similar to a fire, a spark or a coal. Sometimes it's compared to a grain of gold. As it flourishes, it seems that the moon has blossomed, shining like a star, bathed in the colors of the rainbow. Light shine around the flower. The darkest point of the night becomes brighter than the day. Many couples venture out in the meadows and woods to search for this mythical flower. So guys, while we are here, I want to show you something cool. So in the past, when um, a young Latvian woman would get married, uh, her family would give her a chest filled with goods that uh, they would um, give to the husband. Hmm? So come check it out what's inside. Only the best of goods like uh, jewelry, fine cloths, all sorts of beautiful, valuable stuff. Tradition. Tradition! This holiday is also characterized by the braiding of crown. The proudest crown goes to each, Janis and League. 
as well as to the hosts of the festivities. We burn the wreaths of the past year. After the holiday, we usually put this year's wreaths on the wall to feed them to the fire next year. The male wreath is very minimalist, made of pure oak leaves. It's the female version where we go all out with chamomile, corn flowers, clovers, endless diversity of the meadow grasses and flowers. Once you're done, you could also try some fortune-telling games using a wreath. Any maiden who is wondering when she will get married can do the following. Stand with her back turned to a tree and then throw her wreath backwards and upwards as many times as it takes until it gets caught up in the tree. The number of throws it took will be the numbers of years it will take until she gets married. So there's a giant mill behind me. Uh, so, grain. What do we use grain for? And uh, what else is giant? Uh, such an elegant segue, or segue, right? To the next part, which is beer. Finally, the giant elephant in the room, beer. The Baltic tribes have been brewing beer for a very long time. Uh, some would joke that Latvians have beer flowing uh, instead of blood. But we're not alcoholics. Beer is a manifestation of the natural. So, um, yeah, we call beer alus. Old Saxons called it elu. Estonians call it olu. And Finns call it olut. El, basically, right? as opposed to lager. Um, but it uh, doesn't matter how you call it, it is uh, an essential part of the midsummer festivities. Uh, some Latvian families still, to this day, uh, they make their own unique type of beer. Um, others just buy huge barrels. And, uh, but you know what? You have to keep in mind that during this night we don't go to sleep. So you can't have too much beer. You should not overindulge. You have to stay fresh because otherwise, uh, let's take a quick look at my card. If you fall asleep after having too much beer on the midsummer day, you will sleep through the whole next year. You don't want that. So drink good Latvian beer, make your own beer. Uh, don't sleep, don't have too much beer, but do have some beer. Celebrating the solstice, especially nowadays, is of course not only about the sun, fertility, good harvest, etc. Some of us have only seen harvest in video games like Age of Empires, right? So what? We are simply glad that summer has arrived. Winters in our region can get very harsh, so summer is a very welcome guest. Also, Latvians tend not to be extremely emotional on a daily basis. But these massive holidays with songs near the bonfire is a great way of expressing our emotions. A single night when the whole country feels so connected, a perfect yanshan of summer joy that bring us together. Guys, if you return from Latvia without some amber um, souvenirs, you haven't been to Latvia. Look at all this amber beauty. Living near the sea, we even sometimes go for a walk on the shore and we find our own amber. But of course the stuff you can find here is already polished. It's made into beautiful jewels and um, uh, all sorts of things. We even have, look, soap with honey and amber. So if you're coming to the open air museum, visit the shop as well. The prices are good and there's a variety of stuff, uh, not just amber, some beautiful cloth, linen, uh, uh, scarves and everything. Just take a look around. If we turn to the cabinet of folk songs, a historic collection of documents that preserve traditions and other details about pre-Christian Latvian tribes, we can get a basic understanding of how important the summer solstice really is. The folklore scholar Christians Barons managed to gather 1,600 14 traditional songs related to Christmas, the winter solstice. But when it comes to the summer solstice, he managed to gather 4,556 songs. That puts things into perspective. Hey, hey, where did you go? Oh, there you are. So, I gotta let you in on a secret. So, if you don't want to annoy your Latvian friends, then uh, 
Well, the celebration is called Yani, right? The solstice. The night of the solstice is surrounded by two days, June 23 and 24, Yani and Ligua. It's the name day, obviously, of Yanis and uh, Liga. In Microsoft office, we have 20 guys called Yanis. For example, Yanis Medis. Hello, Yanis. So, um, yeah, and the name of the festivity, Yani, you might confuse it with the Christian tradition of, uh, let me look it up, John the Baptist. Not to be confused. The Latvian Yanis is also um, a sacred figure. Nothing to do with Christianity. We have our own pagan deities. And uh, Yanis, for instance, is uh, the fertility deity who rides his steed across the fields and brings good harvest. Because uh, summer solstice, it's all about the fertility, right? So please, don't confuse Janis with uh, Janis Pestitais, I think in Latin. John the Baptist, not the same. So now we're in a very cool place, both literally and not. It's a hot day, but here finally some freshness. And uh, this is a church, so I have to be quiet. It's a 18th century church, very old, and it is not a replica. Like all the buildings you've seen today, for preservation purposes, they have been taken from original locations and rebuilt here uh, in the open air museum. So not a replica. But um, one last midsummer fact for you. Nothing related to church or Christianity. This is just a cool location for this bit. So the last thing I want to tell you today about uh, our traditions is the relationship with plants. Uh, in the past, of course, we thought um, in uh, like a magical context. Uh, we believed that the, the plants can protect us from harm and so on. And there's some truth to it, like uh, uh, some medical herbs. They do have the active ingredients in them, right? But of course, um, today, the number one thing for plants, if we don't count food, is tea. And uh, Latvians drink all sorts of tea. We pick our, our own herbs, our own tea plants. And uh, I'm not just talking about the mainstream stuff like um, lindenberry or uh, chamomile. For example, my favorite tea, which I picked myself, and also I'm not talking about peppermint, which I also like to pick, and there's the lemon mint as well, cowslip. Do you know cowslip? It is like uh, the nature's um, candy. Uh, the plant is so sweet. I know that the Brits use it to make some, some type of alcohol, like a tonic or something, but uh, Latvians just take the cowslip flowers and add boiling water. That's it. It is one of the sweetest drinks you can have. It's, it reminds me of, you know, this nasty iced tea? Same thing, only without uh, the additives, the chemicals, the, all the nasty stuff, the conservatives. Just pure, uh, natural, micro-element vitality for you. Pure energy. So, cowslip. Write it down, try it out. If you're wondering where is this beautiful location, you need to look for the Ethnographic Open Air Museum of Latvia. The way you find it is you just go from the Monument of Freedom down Brivibe Street, all the way past Jugula Lake, and turn right at the Brivibe Street. Okay guys, I hope I've given you more reasons to come to Latvia. Uh, if you need even more reasons, we have a train the trainer event in Riga in October. But uh, there are countless reasons to come to Latvia. So today we showed you the beautiful museum and um, told you about some of the traditions. In the end, some of you still might have a question. Okay, there's a lot of random information, but what do you do on midsummer? Oh, me, for example, I will take my friends, my family, we will go to the countryside, we will have bonfires, beer, cheese, all the things we showed you today. It's not some, some distant past. 
there's a bridge between the past and the present. So I hope that you feel now even more connected to us. And speaking of connections, I want to show you another thing which I have in my family. So this beautiful necklace, it features the traditional, I think, Peruvian uh, bead making, like a lot of people make this kind of beads nowadays, right? But if you look closer, there, there are some Baltic ornaments. Uh, I hope we're in focus now. But uh, on the sides, you see the Baltic ornaments and in the middle, there's a tree. So the plant's theme is ever present. So what my point with this is that we are all connected and I showed you some part of Latvian culture. Tell me in the comments, what do you do in the summer? Do you celebrate solstice? Do you have these like um, cars going by when you film videos? You probably have those. Do you have some, I don't know, traditions that are cherished from generation to generation? Or you are, or maybe you're a completely modern man, you have no traditions. Also interesting, tell me about that. So, as always, uh, let's have a chat in the comments. Come to Latvia, subscribe to our channel. And uh, yeah, have a nice day and have a nice summer.